Hello everyone, welcome to 60 Minutes-ish of you. I am Adrian. Um, before we start today, I'm going to suggest um, and encourage you to grab either blocks, you the blocks, or a stack of books um, that's sturdy enough that you can put a little bit of weight on it and it'll just assist you in bringing the floor closer to you in some positions where we're bending down. Um, same as all of my classes. Uh, secondly and thirdly, please grab a blanket or a towel that you can fold up. Um, the third part of that is a nice big cushy pillow or two even. Um, and these are just softer items to support the body. Um, sometimes our ligaments and muscles aren't in the warmed up or just natural state where they can relax without a little bit of help. And sometimes it feels nice to have something soft helping you from underneath rather than a hard block. Um, so blocks can work as well, but they don't feel as good when you're trying to relax on them. So go grab those if you have those items right now. I'm noticing that this is tipped a little bit too far up so you can't see the mat. So I'm just gonna fix that. Uh, I'm there with me. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, and we're going to get started standing today. So find any place on your mat. It could be at the top, it could be on a strange diagonal like this, like me. And I'm going to encourage you to have your feet kind of wide apart, at least as wide as your hips. And if you don't like to close your eyes, that's fine. Instead, I encourage you to cast your gaze down towards the floor. Let the eyes soften and let your gaze fuzz out a little bit. Let your focus unfocus visually. Or if you do like to, you can close the eyelids down. Everyone, tuck your chin slightly. Feeling a lengthening in the back of the neck. And imagine a kind of lift out through the top of the head while still keeping that chin slightly tucked towards the chest. Bring your attention down to the soles of your feet. Just notice the sensation of them touching the ground below you. Maybe you sway a little bit side to side to understand the feeling of shifting your weight into one side of the foot and then into the other side. Similarly, shift the weight back towards the heels, through center, and then forward onto the toes. So we're kind of just establishing our peripheral boundaries working with the foot as an example. So then when we come to stillness, we're more likely to feel like we know the feeling of center. And we aim for center um, just because if you have your weight kind of evenly distributed within those four dimensional boundaries, more likely to feel more sturdy, more connected to the surface below you. You can build up from that surface. So we already talked about spreading the weight through those four, you know, quote unquote, corners of the feet. And then your awareness can travel up the calves, the lower legs, up through the knees, maybe engage the kneecap slightly. So draw, use the muscles of the legs to draw the kneecap up towards the face. You'll feel the quads turn on a little bit as you do this. The glutes engage, pushing the hips forward slightly as you engage the glutes or the bum, the backside. And then you notice that you may feel really sturdy in that lower half of the body. So building ourselves up. So we've gotten to the point 
of our low belly now. And since we have those glutes slightly engaged, hips pressing forward, you might feel also that the low abdomen is turned on slightly. We can just slightly tuck the belly button, pull it back towards the spine, and harden up, harden up those abs. Even if they don't feel hard, you just want to, uh, the stacking allows them to feel sturdy without gripping or uh, flexing, I guess. I was like, uh, I noticed now, because I kind of laughed out loud, if you kind of laugh, you feel that engagement of the belly. So when you laugh, it's not this muscular expression of strength, it's just a little tightening up. And you can rest the two hands on the belly as I have been doing. Start to notice the ease of the breath. So you pull it down through the nose, down the windpipe and into the lungs, causing the belly to balloon out into the hands. And feeling the belly relax and soften back towards the center as the breath escapes up and back out the nostrils. So let's keep noticing that palate breath in and down through the nose, pushing out the belly and soften to release the push up and back out the nostrils. Take some kind of quiet time to watch that cycle, breath in through the nose, down the belly, and then back in and out. Feel the warmth of the belly against the hand. Relax the shoulders, just allow them to be heavy. Allow them to be guided by gravity down towards the floor, away from the ears. And recall that feeling of pushing up through, pushing against the floor, up through the structure of the body, out through the top of the head. As you grow longer in the spine, longer in the whole body, up through top of the head, the shoulders stay weighted down. Just still in the belly, ebbing in and out as the breath so does ebb. If you keep your hands on the belly, so, or you can shift them to the sides of the rib cage, fingertips pointing forward, thumbs um, kind of up towards your mid torso, pinkies lower down, maybe they hit that point, in your hips um, above the pelvis. And just rest the hands, the fingers on the ribs. No need to, you know, pull them in like a corset. The elbows are pointing outwards. Maybe you can softly pinch the shoulder blades together on the back and feel the chest, and the elbows broaden. Again, re-engage with that sense of feet pressing away from the floor, that energy guiding all the way up through and out of the top of the body. And now notice the four-dimensional breath. What I mean, what I mean by four dimensions is not um, in the you know, physics sense of dimensional. Um, I mean that there's a front, a back, and two sides of the body. Of course, out of 360 degrees, infinitesimally between those cardinal <laughs> directions, I guess. But just realize that as you breathe in, the rib cage expands not just forward. It's not just, you know, like we're focusing on the belly expanding out forward. 
Her cage is so small, so they go side to side. And you can also sense that the breath presses into the back side of the torso. Those are the four dimensions that we're paying attention to right now. This is as if you are softly holding a beach ball as you inhale, feel the beach ball inflate on all sides. The ribs expand on all sides. And as you exhale, the beach ball, the lungs, the torso constricts a little bit. This is a little air. And inhale. Beach ball swells up. Exhale. Each ball releases the air a few more times. Maybe you work to smooth out and lengthen that breath so the inflation, deflation slows and steadies. And we will slowly release the fingertips and hands down, letting those fingertips pull the arms straight-ish towards the earth. Flutter your eyelids open, visually taking in the room, the world around you. Let's bring the shoulder or the uh, fingertips to the shoulders. And now we're going to do is shrug the shoulders up towards the ears and then pull them back and down the back, so just creating circles, starting forward, up, and back, and down, okay? And you can gradually bring the elbows into that, allow the elbows to lead that movement. It's creating, that's more of like a C shape, but uh, kind of pretend you're doing a full circle. Elbows go forward, up, over, back, and down, okay, a few times. Just loosen it them up. And, and once you're satisfied or maybe starting to get tired, let's reverse the direction. Elbows lead back. Up and out and up again. Forward and down. Back. Out and up. Forward and down. Maybe you're able to speed it up. Stay kind of strong by pulling in that low belly so you stay stacked. Remember, press the floor away with the feet. Strong base for this movement up top. And then we will release. If you are not ready, at the front of your mat, come to it. It can be nice and um, separated. Imagine you have two fists, two fists width <laughs> between your feet. Looking down at them, toes are facing forward. Your ankles are under your knees. All of that is under the hips. We engage that feeling of now the shoulders stacking over the hips and everything below. Just one big column. Okay. We'll inhale, guiding your arms up towards the ceiling. Maybe look up, spread the fingertips. We exhale, bend the knees and fold over the legs, releasing the head down. Check it out. Yes and no. Walk the hands up onto the shins and press them away, straightening the arms, straightening the back, pull the low belly in to the hips, also pulling back while the head pulls forward. Hold over the legs again, planting the palms, step the right leg back, and then left, holding in your plank, pressing the floor away. If you don't like the feeling of this on your wrists or your back or anything, lower the knees down, but keep pressing the floor away. Last suggestion, if you actually have wrist um, problems or injuries, you can take this into a fist. It'll feel uncomfortable in a different sense, but um, if safety on your wrist is an issue, you can do this instead. If you have the palms flat, which I suggest you try, if you don't have injuries, 
Press the floor away, grip into the fingertips. This allows the weight to shift out of the wrist, forward, radially out into the fingers instead. Same or similar type of exercise is what we're doing with the feet by spreading the weight, okay? Um, if you're up, knees up, great. I was talking a lot. Everyone lower the knees, send the hips back, leaving the hands forward. Take a little pause in child's pose, releasing the head down towards the mat. Take a breath in, inflate through the back. Breath out, soften. Gazes forward. We're going to shift forward the shoulders through the elbows. We're going to lay on our bellies. Untuck the toes if they were for some reason tucked. So the tops of your feet go towards the mat. Palms are on the sides of the ribs, so they're back a bit. So if you were to look back at your elbows, maybe they're kind of like right angles. Your wrists under or back towards your elbows instead of up at your shoulders. Press the floor away, engage the legs, so pull those kneecaps up towards the hips and face. So you see how my leg just slipped off the floor. Press the floor away, pinch the shoulder blades, look forward, baby cobra. Over the forehead, back to the mat, tuck the toes. Sit back into a little child's pose, and then we'll lift the hips up and back, climbing down dog. Wiggle it out a little bit, walking and bending into one leg and then the other. But press the floor away and gripping the fingertips, shift that weight out of the wrists. Or to rotate the tops of the arms inward and forward. So the soft bending parts of your elbows come together and forward. You can allow your head to treat fall between those upper arm bones. Knees can sit nice and bent. Just keep shifting the hips back and up. So we have a nice long diagonal, straightish line. Out through the palms, up the back, out the hips. Look forward and we'll step up to the top of the mat. Leaning in forward fold. Shake the head again, yes and no. Loosen it up. Walk the hands up the shins, press for halfway lift. Hold and exhale. Press into the feet. Keep a nice bend in the knees and sweep the arms out and up as you stack. Head over the spine. Inhale, arms all the way up. Exhale, bring the hands through the center of the chest. Hold and rest now down by the sides. All right, again, inhale, arms reach up, gaze follows. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, walk the hands up the shins or flat back. Exhale, fold, plant the palms, step back left and right for your plank, press the floor away. Breathe into the upper back, spread the shoulder blades, bring knees, tuck the hips back, child's pose, inhale. Exhale, look forward, start to bring the torso forward through the hands to guide the belly down to the mat. Tuck those elbows in towards the side of the chest, pinch the shoulder blades, engage the kneecaps, come up, low cobra. Lower the head, tuck the toes, shift the hips back for a little child's pose. And then hips up and back for down dog. Inhale. Exhale. Pressing the floor away. Inhale. Exhale. Feeling the hips go up and back. Inhale. Pressing the fingertips. Exhale. Look forward, bend the knees and step up to the front of the mat to move it forward. Pull. Inhale for halfway lift, long straight back. Exhale to fold one more time. Inhale, roll the spine up. Arms go out and up, gaze follows. Inhale, exhale, fold the hands through center, down by the sides. All right, we'll change this up a bit. Inhale, arms up, exhale, fold. Here, step the left foot back. 
only, coming into lower runner's lunge. Let's just shift the weight forward and back. So we have our toes tapped, we're pressing out through the heel of that left foot. Both our hips are facing forward, our knees stacked over our right ankle. And warming up the underside, the front side of that left hip, the hip flexor. And we'll stop the movement, the motion for a second. Press the floor away. So we'll engage this kind of scissoring feeling by pulling the right hip back and pulling the left hip forward. And you'll see, for me, my hips lifted away from the floor. I also engage the muscles in the backs of my or I really engage the muscles in the front of my left leg, but it caused the back of my leg to straighten and lift up towards the ceiling. Still breathing. Now plant the left palm on the ground. If the palm or if the floor feels really far away, I'll take a beat, grab my blocks. It can be on its lowest setting to raise the floor up about what is that, four inches. If four inches isn't enough, Raise it up six inches on that second height. That's not enough even, that's totally fine. Raise it up all the way, okay? So I'm going to encourage you, I'm gonna bring it down to the lower level for me so it feels a little more sturdy. Plant the left palm on whatever your lower surface is. Pull the right hip back, left hip forward, feel really sturdy in the base of the legs. And then you shift your weight fully out of the right hand and pull the right hand up and overhead, twisting open to the right. Don't forget to breathe. So this twist is going to constrict the belly. It's great to still focus on the breath, being more challenge within that smaller space. Feel the fingertips pull up, pulling the right shoulder up, to stack it over the left. And we'll cycle the right arm down. Pull that block out of the way and step the right leg back to meet the left. Hold in your plank, inhale. Exhale, lower knees. And we'll lower the whole belly down to the mat. Take your low cobra, inhale. Pinching your shoulder blades and the elbows back. Exhale, release the head to the mat. Tuck the toes, send the hips back and then up for down dog. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Looking forward, we're going to step the right leg forward. So that's the same one that we had before. Now we'll step the left leg forward to meet it. And we're in forward fold. Inhale for halfway lift. Exhale, fold again. Inhale, come up, right, send the arms out and up, gaze forward. Exhale, hands to your center, down by the side. Take a breath in, maybe soften the eyes. And release breath out to mouth. Let's do two more like that. Inhale. Exhale out the mouth. On the smart, inhale through your nose. Exhale out the mouth. All right, other side. Sheep are face again, about hips with distance under you. We'll inhale, the arm long as follows. Exhale, fold. Inhale, the arms walk up the legs for halfway. Exhale, plant the palms. This time, step the right leg back, coming into your runner's lunge on the other side. Okay, and you can also use the assistance of the block with both arms grounded, okay? So we rock back and forth, feel the opening up on the back side of the legs, the sole of the foot, and the front and underside of the right hip this time, right hip flexor. Come to stillness, press the floor away to straighten the arms, fingertips, and Soft elbow points forward, pull the belly in, pull the left hip back, right hip forward this time, engage the muscles of the right leg to feel the back of it rise up towards the ceiling. 
This time we're going to shift our weight into the spread of the right palm on your block on the floor. We're going to twist open to the left, adding left hand, fingers, pulling the left arm straight, opening the entire chest open to the left side. Still pulling those two hips back and towards one another, the scissoring action, and press the floor away with the right palm. Cycle the left arm down. And you can move the blocks out of your way. We're going to step back to the plank, lower knees, and then the whole torso down. Roll shoulders up and back, take your low cobra, elbows back, knees to tuck toes, briefly through child's pose, and then lift the hips up and back, down dog, three breaths, pressing the floor away, gripping with the fingertips. Lifting out of the shoulders, out, sending the tailbone towards the point where your ceiling and your wall meets. One more breath in, out, bend the knees, look forward, and we'll step up to meet in, hand, in a forward fold at the front of the mat, let the hip hang. Inhale for halfway lift, long arm straight back, exhale fold. Press into the feet, bend the knees, sweep the arms out and up, inhale all the way up. Exhale, hands through center, down by the side. All right, add it on a little bit. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant the palms, step both your feet back to come into our plank. You can stay here or lower down onto the forearms. Draw on forearms, fingertips are forward, forearms are parallel, and lifting to the backs of the legs, but we're tucking the pelvis slightly, which just means you're turning on the glutes, and you'll feel that low belly muscle engagement. All right, if you're down on forearms, follow me, we're just going to shift to a little side plank flow. So you'll Turn, you'll rotate both feet to face right. And you can keep both of them on the ground. Press with the uh, left forearm that's on the ground in the palm to keep the floor away and push the hips up towards the ceiling. You can extend that right arm up overhead. Take a deep breath in and out. Now come back down, couple press in and out in your forearm plank. And then we'll shift a left side, right forearm, and fingertips go to the left. We're on the inner edge of our um, left foot, outer edge of our right foot. Press the floor away with the forearm, hand, and the feet, and lift the hips up. Maybe left arm goes up to you. Big breath in, spread through the chest, and exhale. Come back through center. Breath in and a regular forearm plank, pull the belly in. Spread through the upper chest, spread through the upper back. And lower the knees, send the hips back, let the arms stay long, forward for child's pose. Ah, take some cleansing breaths, so in through the nose and out, sighing to the mouth. Maybe you rock the forehead side to side. All right, we'll move through that again. You can take the forearm variation that I just showed, or we can open it up a little bit and instead do full, um, like it's high plank to full or high side plank. Instead of forearms, we'll be on the full extended straight arms, okay? Let's see, so we are in our child's pose. Let's come up onto all fours. Tuck the toes behind you, extending the legs. And this is our high plank. So press the floor away. Work to straighten the arms. Guide the pits of the elbows forward. Shoulders are over the wrist. Belly button pulls up and in. Get out of the feet. 
Step the left hand under the face, and we'll just turn open to the right. You can keep both feet on the floor. If you like, you can stack the right on top of the left. Push the floor away, everything touching it, and push the hips all the way up. All right, we'll flow back through the center. Hold, press the floor away, center plank. Inhale, exhale, right palm steps under the face. Flip over to the left, open up, left hand overhead, left shoulder stacks over right, press the floor away, press out of that right armpit, maybe top leg stacks on top of right. Hips press up, engage those side abdomen model, um, muscles. All right, back up through center, hold through that plank, keep pressing the floor away, and the hips go up and back, high and down dog. If you were in the forearm plank, Rest in child's pose, and we'll meet you there shortly. If you're in the up dog, the up, the uh, regular down dog, keep pressing the floor away. Arms and shoulders are really turning on here. Keep spreading the weight into the rest of the hand and out of the rest. Keep gripping the fingertips. And keep pressing the hips up and back. Pull the belly button in. And everyone, spread the knees wide, bring them down to the mat with a big toe stretch. Guide the head towards the mat, hips towards the feet, finding rest in child pose. Let's take a couple deep breaths together. We'll breathe into the upper back, feel it inflate. And side the breath out the mouth. Inhale. Pull the shoulders upper back and release. One more time. Inhale. Exhale, release. Four between the hands. All we're going to do is bring the knees together and under the hips and guide the belly down to the ground. Rest. Let the shoulder tops kind of, you're going to release the hands on either side of the hips. So um, palms of the hands are face up. I'm going to let the heads of the shoulders roll down, relax down towards the floor. So the whole upper arm. The whole arm really is on the ground. And turn the, the head so the left cheek rests on the mat. Watch the breath inflate the body. Sense the body puffing into the floor on the inhale. And then uh, savor that relaxation as you kind of melt down into the and then we'll switch the direction of the cheek. Right cheek on the mat. Looking over your left shoulder now. Although eyes can be closed. Watch the body puff up on the inhale. Press the floor away and fully relax, melting into the floor to the exhale. Couple breaths. Experiencing that. All right, bring the forehead to the mat. You're going to kind of step the tops of your feet, step the toes kind of back in space, working to straighten the legs out again. Palms are still face up. We're going to work through a couple versions of a locust pose here. So to start, we're going to, right, we have our um, front of legs engaged, so the knees lift up away from the floor. And then we're going to feel heavy in the pubic bone. Engage the glutes slightly. And then we're going to pinch the shoulder blades together so the shoulder heads lift off the floor and maybe the palms lift off the floor. Lift the head away. Toes stay on the ground. And reach back through the hands, working to straighten the arms, working to bring the fingertips kind of towards each other, rather than letting things go out to the side for now. Keep pressing the floor with the feet. Stay heavy in the pubic bone. Pull the low abdomen in. While you engage the glutes, you can feel that heaviness of the pubic bone. Inhale, maybe you rise up a little higher. Exhale, rest left cheek to the mat. Switch the hips side to side a little bit. It's rocking. All right. We'll go through part two of that. So forehead to mat. 
toes or extend the arm behind you, engage the front of the legs to lift the knees away from the floor. This time we're going to work to pull the toes up away from the floor and we're going to work to pull the feet back rather than up. They'll naturally float up away from the floor, but if we focus on lengthening up and out of the hips, it will feel better rather than warm. It's not good. So we're trying to build strength in the back without dumping that whole curve into the low back. All right, so anyway, we have our legs engaged. We're getting ready to lift the toes up and back. But we'll start with that same action, the shoulders, roll the shoulders up and down the back, lifting away from the floor. Arms, you can feel the triceps engaged here as the palms lift up towards the ceiling. And now lift the toes and point them all the way back as far as you can. Same kind of reminder here, rather than letting the legs go wide like the arms, instead, everything pulls back, back, back up. Pull that belly button in. Keep breathing, pinch the shoulder blades. One more time, inhale, get a little higher. Exhale, release the head, neck, and shoulders down. Let the right cheek rest on the mat. Rock the hips side to side. Ah. All right, to finish this out, we got to do three always, right? I don't know why. But a third variation. You can take either of the ones that we did, step one or step two, or you can weave the hands into a basket on the back and you're going to go through the same um, kind of build up. So you're going to pinch the shoulder blades together, pull the shoulders down away from the ears, and then start to slowly extend the arms back. And they may not straighten, they probably won't. And um, so you're, you're just this feeling of the fist going away from the shoulders and then also up away from the hips, okay? So this the fist is drawing the shoulder blades up. It's like a mechanical pinching of the shoulder blades together instead of you just summoning the muscles without the help of the arms. Big opening through the chest, pressing into the tops of the feet on the ground. Behind you, engage the glutes slightly, pull that low belly in to protect the low back. Complete, open as you breathe in. And then you can lift the feet away from the floor too. Fist is now going towards the feet. One more breath. Exhale, unclasp the arms, relax everything. Take a cheek to the mat, swish the hips side to side. Ah, close the eyes, take a few breaths in the nose, out the mouth. Feel the heart pitter pattering against the floor. And then watch it start to slow as you give the breath the time of day. Let's see you're done with that. Place the arms under the shoulders, or the palms rather under the shoulders, tuck your toes, send the hips up. I mean, we do tabletop. Let's just have a seat. Um, let's see, we're going to come onto the back now. So just find your way down onto the seat and put your butt kind of in the middle of the mat so you have enough space to lay backwards onto it. Okay, we're gonna go through a couple of supine positions here. So to start, we'll do figure four. That's what it is called. So we have our knees up towards the ceiling, soles of the feet planted on the mat. Before we do anything more, feel the whole length of the back on the floor, lots of contact. Breath in, feel the backs of the ribs press the floor away. On the exhale, all of that melt down to the floor. All right, to start, plant, and then kind of shift your weight into the right sole of the foot. You plant it really firmly down. And then pull the left knee towards the face. Then you're gonna guide the left ankle across the right thigh towards the knee. All right, so it's like we have this sitting in a chair, relaxing. And then 
this might be enough. Um, kind of the sensation you might feel here is an opening on the back side of the seat and the outer hip. Okay. If you want some more, start to bring the knee closer to you, the right knee closer to you. So the knee that's behind the left ankle and the right foot floats away from the floor. You can keep this right foot close to the seat. You can reach with both hands through this uh, little triangular shape between the two thighs and clasp the hands on the front side of the right shin. So this might be enough to feel a lot of sensation. You might also feel it on your right hip just because you're kind of all balled up here. Wherever you are, flex through the left foot. And if you have any bend in your left arm, maybe rest that um, rest the left elbow on the right on the left thigh. You can push the left thigh away. So the left knee, you're pushing the left knee, you're pushing the left thigh away from the face, away from the chest. Keep flexing through the left foot to protect your knee. And at the same time, you can pull on the right shin. Pull it towards the chest. So over time, like years, this um, left shin will slowly come closer and closer towards the chest as the outer rotation of the left hip evolves. So breathe in, the envision sending it to the low back, so feel the low lungs expand down to the low back, so the low back presses against the floor. Also send that breath conceptually to the outer left hip. Super sensational outer left hip right now. A few more breaths here. Eventually we'll switch to the other side. So one cue I failed to mention up, up um, at the start, that's when we entered this pose, we want to try and keep the shoulders on the mat. You want to keep the whole upper back on the mat, okay? So if you find yourself like this, release the shins. Work on this first. Work on keeping the back on the mat. And you'll only, and you can also clasp behind the thigh. You don't need to go all the way for the shins. You can go behind the thigh. And when you get to a point where you feel like you need to lift up away from the floor with the upper back, back it out a little bit, okay? All right, release that left side. Both knees face up. This time, stamp down to the left sole of the foot across, right ankle across the left thigh, up towards the knee. And you can stay here. Feel the low back solidify flat against the mat. And we'll start low, about to kind of turn on top of that. If you want more, lift the left foot away from the ground, guiding the right shin closer to the face. Stay like this. You can grab behind the left thigh, start to pull it towards the face. Maybe the right thigh will catch a bent right elbow, and you can. Push the right thigh away with the right elbow as you pull the left thigh. So push against the right, pull with the left. Might catch the front of the shin. Flex through the right foot. Again, take jobs on what your shoulders are doing. They're lifted from the floor, back it out. Slowly guiding a kind of parallel, one day parallel right shin closer and closer to the torso. 
Sending the breath down the lower lungs. If you like the low back inflation idea, you can do that. If you like guiding and conceptually towards the right hip, I certainly do not blame you. I'm feeling it. Let's take three more deep breaths. And each of these breaths, since we have a lot of physical sensation, challenge yourself to slow and smooth out the breath. Don't be panicked by the physical sensation. As long as you are protecting your joints, so like I mentioned, flexing to the foot so you don't feel any twinges in the knee, the sensation you're feeling probably is not pain, isn't you know, injury. You will know injury. Um, and if you feel it back out, do something different. But if you feel discomfort, you're sensing change. And it's okay to sit with that. And breathing into it will help. All right, after three, release. You grip on the left leg you had. Uncross the legs. Bring the soles of the feet to the mat. All right. Pull the right or the left knee towards the face. We're going to start here. You can keep the sole of the right foot planted into the mat. Press the floor away with it. And then we're going to extend the left leg up towards the ceiling. So take abs with what's going on with your low back. If it's lifted up away from the floor, it helps the super curved up. Move that elevated left leg further away from you, more upright or forward. And maybe we can feel the low back re-engage with the floor, make contact with the floor. Okay. We're going to this is where we can lift the head, neck, and shoulders, reaching up towards the foot. Okay, pull the low belly in, press the floor away with the right foot. This is just a little engagement to get started. And then clasp somewhere on the back of that left leg, and then let the shoulders rest back down towards the floor. You want to find a position on the back of the legs where you're starting to feel the left hamstrings, okay? So maybe you need to walk up towards the calf. And you can bend the elbows out and pull the left leg towards the face. But please try to keep the upper back on the floor. You can certainly have a bend in your left knee, this elevated knee. You might start to feel it kind of wobbling and shaking. That's cool. Up and out of bed. You can also work to try and straighten a little more. Uh, that'll probably lead it further up towards the ceiling and away from the face. It's fine. You can keep the flux in the heel. Let's all do that. Flux through the heel, pull the toes towards the face downwards. Okay. We'll make a nice L with our leg and foot. And now point the left toes up towards the ceiling and stretch the front of the calves. You can even kind of do a little thumb massage on the front side of the shin. All right, flex the toes, shorten the shin, and point the toes, lengthen the shin. Maybe keeping the toe pointed, you can again bend the elbows and pull the left leg towards the face. Whew, that feels very different. So instead of a ton of sensation on the back, upper leg, on the hamstring, I feel this a lot in my left shin. Ooh. All right, find a place where you can stay for three breaths, and we'll take three long breaths. Try not to panic. You're fine. Feels weird, but it's fine. And then, if you like, you can extend the right leg long. Maybe it stays floating up away from the floor. Maybe it releases down the mat. Woo! It's just changing the shape a little bit. See if you can kick out forward through the right heel. Try to keep both backs of the pelvis on the ground. Take a breath in. Take a breath out. All right, release. 
both legs to the mat. Woo. All right, bring both soles of the feet back to the mat, knees up towards the ceiling. We'll switch it out for the other side. So this time we press into the floor with the sole of our left foot and tuck right knee towards the face. And then we slowly extend the right foot up towards the ceiling and pull the priming circles with my ankle, one direction and then the other. Then we grab towards our legs. So to start, we're going to lift head, neck, and shoulders reach up towards the foot. Engage low belly. Maybe you're able to push the low back into the floor and lift the head, neck, and shoulders up again. And then find a spot on your leg and slowly lower upper back to the floor. If you felt the pelvis come up away from the floor, walk the hands down the leg closer to the seat. Find a good spot where you have good back body contact with the floor, but you're starting to feel the backs of your right leg turn on the hamstrings, okay? Maybe you can bring a bend to the knees, pull the toes and the shin towards the face. You can kick out through the heel. So we'll start with the flexed foot. A couple breaths here. We're also working with that, that active whole leg. So we're pulling the kneecap up towards the face. If you don't like that, that's okay. You can have a bend in the knee instead. Have more relaxed. You will have to instead more actively pull the leg towards the face. So it's whether you want to work with the arms, use the force of the arms against the legs, or use the force of the legs. Stretch the legs. And then maybe point the toe towards the ceiling. See how that changes the sensation. Maybe bring a massage to the right shin. And now we pull pointed the foot leg <laughs> towards the face. My cramp up by this a little bit. All right, if you want to try it out, you can kick the left leg forward, letting it float in the air or rest down on the ground. Keep pulling the right leg towards the face, trying to keep the back, both sides of the back of the pelvis on the ground. Engage that long left leg. Kick out to the left heel. One more breath in. And release both legs down to the floor. Shake out the hips. All right, we'll do a little twist. So, both soles of the feet to the mat, knees up towards the ceiling. I'm going to pull the left knee in to the chest. Extend the right leg out long. And use the right hand um, to guide the right, the left knee across the body and over towards the right side, the right floor. The floor on the right side of you. So your knee might not make it to the floor. You can grab a block or a pillow to make up that difference. If you don't like the feeling of it hanging in space. Check in with your left shoulder and see if you can draw it down towards the floor. Let's start first with your cactus and your goalpost arms. So your upper arms go straight out of the shoulders on the floor and your palms are face up. You can stay like this or you can extend both arms long. Take the gaze over the left shoulder towards the left palm. You can also rest the right palm on the outer thigh of the left leg. Coaxing it towards the floor. So if we're rolling onto our right hip, our outer right hip, drawing the left knee towards the right side, but keeping the left shoulder anchored in the distance. Take a deep breath 
down and into the base of the spine. Puffing up the belly and release to soften two more times. Inhale, expand and lengthen. Exhale, hopefully soften into the twist a bit more. Come out, bring the gaze up towards the ceiling. You can use the right arm to guide the left knee forward, coming to rest on the back of the pelvis. And I'll extend left leg long. Shake out the hips. See what the legs feel like. Do they feel longer, one versus the other? And I will draw the right knee into the face. Boot in, left leg is long. Use the left hand to guide the right knee across the body towards the floor on your left side. Use the right shoulder as an anchor, extend the right arm up to the right. Gaze and follow over the right shoulder. If you don't like the sensation of a floating right knee, if it doesn't make it to the floor, find one of those Three props I suggested at the beginning of class. It's okay to come out of the post to find them. Let's see. Feel my block somewhere over here. So I'm just going to stack it underneath my knee. You can also go under your thigh just so you feel supported. Take a deep breath down the spine to the base of the spine. Expansive breath to puff up the belly and the back. And you soften on the exhale. You can also soften the gaze, closing down the eyelids. A couple more deep breaths, really trying to feel guided down the back. And then to come out, gaze goes up towards the ceiling. Use the right or the left palm to guide the back towards the floor again. Stem Right leg long, like both hands, the backs, both hands, spine floor wide and away from the torso. Maybe you kind of pinch the shoulder blades together and walk the shoulder blades onto the floor. So you feel the chest a little more expansive and spreading. If you have any pain in your low back right now, you can either walk the feet down to soles and you can kind of wiggle them out towards the edges of your mat, let the knees melt in. You can also keep the legs long, but bring some pillows or a blanket on the back side of the extended legs so it introduces a slight bend and the legs can relax into a blanket here. I'm not really showing, but I hope that my words can explain it a little bit. I'm going to off for this knock knee at leg pose. Bring the hands to the belly. And one final time, observe the breath, expanding up into the hands. And softening back down towards the ground. Watching. You can continue the palms softly resting on the belly, feeling the warmth of the hands in the belly. Or if you'd like, you can move into a different final position. Full extended arms on the floor. Maybe now you feel ready to have legs expanded or extended on the floor. Once you're in, you declare shall be your final position. Take a deep breath in, pulling the breath down to the belly, let it puff up and hold. Five, four, three, two, one, release the breath out of the mouth. <sighs> the 
feel the back body melt down into the floor. Feel the front body cascade down on top of it, second layer. Encourage the muscles to relax, connective tissues to soften. Look for the muscles of the jaw and the face. You are okay. Relax. Just watch the body enter, watch the breath enter and then leave the body. I'll leave you here. I hope you will remain for at least three minutes. It is good for you just to let the action of the practice kind of sink in. Give yourself a little bit of rest. Put in kind of a bookmark or a book end. We'll launch back into the outer world again. I hope you've had a lovely time. And even if you didn't, it was a time of growth. And um, it was just dedicated to experiencing the world and your body. And um, that's a benefit in itself, even if it doesn't always feel great. I'm really happy that you came and took some time for yourself. It's good for the world as well as for you. Have a lovely rest of your day, and I will see you next week or next time, whenever you tune in. Have a great day.